So here we're going to discuss aldol condensations, which are covered in the aldehydes and ketones, nucleophilic addition, and alpha substitution reactions chapter. And in an aldol condensation, there are two distinct steps. The first step is described as the aldol reaction. So we're going to look at an example of the aldol reaction and look at how ethanol reacts to form a beta hydroxyaldehyde. And two molecules of ethanol come together in the presence of hydroxide ion to form this product, this beta hydroxyaldehyde. So let's look at the mechanism of this reaction. Initially, we get deprotonation of one molecule of ethanol using hydroxide ion as base. The hydroxide ion deprotonates an alpha hydrogen atom, pushing the electron density onto the oxygen, and we form an enolate ion. And this enolate ion is a nucleophile. So it can react with a molecule of ethanol that has not been deprotonated. And here we get a classic nucleophilic addition where the electrons attack the carbonyl group, pushing the electron density onto the electronegative oxygen. And this is the new carbon-carbon bond that we formed in this alkoxide ion. Finally, the alkoxide ion is protonated on reaction with water, and we form a beta-hydroxyaldehyde. And the name aldol refers to the fact that the product contains both an aldehyde and an alcohol group within the molecule. You'll notice that hydroxide ion is introduced in the beginning, and it's regenerated at the end, so it acts as a catalyst. And you'll also note that every step in this sequence is reversible. And the position of the equilibrium will be influenced by the structure of the starting carbonyl, the starting aldehyde, or indeed the starting ketone. So now we're going to discuss the second step in an aldol condensation, which is the condensation step, the elimination of water from the beta-hydroxyaldehyde. And we can affect the elimination of water from the beta-hydroxyaldehyde using either acid and heat or hydroxide and heat. And here we'll look at the use of hydroxide ion and heat. Initially, the hydroxide ion will deprotonate at the alpha position to form an enolate ion. Now, the most acidic hydrogen atom in the beta-hydroxyaldehyde will be the OH group, and we'll get predominant deprotonation here, but even a small amount of deprotonation at this position will lead to an enolate ion, which rapidly eliminates hydroxide ion as a leaving group to form this enal product. Now, we don't normally think of hydroxide ion as being a good leaving group, but in this particular case, it is a good leaving group because the product is so stable. The enal, which contains a CO double bond and a CC double bond, are conjugated. So there's a good driving force for eliminating the hydroxide ion to form this very stable conjugated system. Double bond, single, double bond. You'll notice that the hydroxide ion is regenerated in this reaction, so it acts as a catalyst. And you'll also notice that the stereochemistry of the enal is E. We don't get any of the Z isomer, and that's because the E isomer is more stable than the Z. The bulky substituents are on the opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. We're now going to look at a crossed aldol condensation, which involves the reaction of two different carbonyl compounds. In order to achieve a good yield of a single crossed aldol condensation product, we need to ensure that we select the right carbonyl reactants and we use the appropriate conditions. And there are three key things that need to be borne in mind in this reaction. So we're going to look at an example now where we're reacting propanone with benzaldehyde. And the first thing that we'll notice is that benzaldehyde cannot form an enolate ion. There are no alpha hydrogen atoms in benzaldehyde. So only propanone can be deprotonated to form an enolate ion. So as soon as propanone forms an enolate ion, it could act as a nucleophile and then attack the carbonyl group of the aldehyde. Also, the carbon atom in the CO group of the aldehyde is more electrophilic than that in the ketone. So the enolate ion derived from propanone is more likely to attack the carbonyl group of the aldehyde rather than the carbonyl group of a molecule of propanone which has not been deprotonated. Finally, we can ensure a good yield of a single aldol condensation product by adding the ketone slowly to a mixture of the benzaldehyde and the hydroxide ion. This ensures that as soon as the enolate ion is formed from propanone, 
it prefers to react with the benzaldehyde because there's a relatively high concentration of benzaldehyde in the reaction mixture and a very low concentration of propanone which has not been deprotonated. So under these reaction conditions we can deprotonate propanone, we can form an enolate ion at one of these alpha positions, these are identical so it doesn't matter which of these carbons we deprotonate, we can then react the enolate ion with the carbonyl of benzaldehyde and a nucleophilic addition, as shown here. We can form this new carbon-carbon bond. And then this alkoxide ion is then protonated with water to form the product derived from the aldol reaction. All that remains is to effect an elimination of water from that product. And we can do this by heating with hydroxide ion. We can eliminate water to form this enone product where we have a ketone and an alkene. And again, the elimination of hydroxide ion is facile because the product is stabilized by conjugation. In this particular case, not only is the CC double bond stabilized by conjugation with the ketone, but also by the benzene ring. And you'll also notice that the E isomer of the enone is formed selectively because that isomer is more stable than the Z isomer. So we'll finish up now by looking at a couple of other examples of crossed aldol condensations. And in the first example, we're going to look at reaction of acetophenone, this methyl ketone, with benzaldehyde, this aromatic aldehyde, in the presence of hydroxide ion. Acetophenone can be deprotonated. We can deprotonate one of these alpha hydrogen atoms. The enolate ion can then attack the carbonyl group of benzaldehyde. After protonation and then elimination of water, we can form this enone. And again, we get the E stereochemistry of the carbon-carbon double bond because we form the most stable product possible from that elimination reaction. And finally, we're going to look at an example where ethyl acetate reacts with benzaldehyde in the presence of ethoxide ion. And this illustrates that we can use other carbonyl compounds as precursors in crossed aldol condensations. We can deprotonate one of the alpha hydrogen atoms in ethyl acetate using the ethoxide ion as base. The enolate ion derived from the ester can then attack the carbonyl group of benzaldehyde. We can push electron density onto the oxygen. After protonation and elimination of water, we can form this alpha-beta unsaturated ester. And again, you'll notice that we get the E isomer of the double bond because that's the most stable isomer of the product.